Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts video tutorial. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today we're going to make one of the new iPod Nanos. This tutorial will be in two parts. In the first part, we'll use Illustrator's 3D extrude and bevel effect to construct the body of the Nano. And in the second part, we'll make the icons and the screens, and then we'll put it all together. Okay, let's get started. First, take the rounded rectangle tool and draw out a thin rounded rectangle. I want to change the degree of the roundness, so I can do this on the fly by pressing the up or down arrow keys. And I'm going to color this pink, and then hit the X key to switch from the fill and stroke, and the slash key to take the stroke off. Now with the rectangle selected, go up to the Effects menu to 3D Extrude and Bevel. This is a rather large dialog box. Be sure to click the Preview button. And then this drop-down menu at the top contains several presets. And we're going to start with one that is called Off Axis Top. With that as a starting point, you can then move this cube around in space and see your changes update in real time. Now I want to make this more or less square, so I'm going to increase the extrude depth here in this section. That's about right. And it looks a little bit funky because it's supposed to be going back in space a bit. So I'm also going to increase the perspective to make that look like it's receding just a little bit. Now we're going to give it some shading. And if you don't see this section in your dialog box, click More Options up there at the top. These various controls have to do with how the light behaves and how the object is shaded. If you change the highlight intensity, it'll get a little brighter, of course. And I'm going to increase the blend steps to make a smoother transition between the shades. Here I can move the light source around, and as you can see, if I move it to the left, the highlight shows up a little bit better. And when you're done, click OK. And if you want to go back and edit these settings, click on the effect in the Appearance panel to make adjustments. I can add another light by clicking on this new icon, and I can delete the lights as well. And this is still a live effect, which means that you can continue to make adjustments. And here it is in outline mode. So if you want to save these settings to use for another shape, there's not really a way to copy them. But what you can do is create a graphic style. Simply drag the object onto the graphic styles panel. And by the way, if the panel is not visible, you can just hover over its tab to bring it up. Double click the styles thumbnail and give it a name if you like. And now you can apply these settings to other objects. I need to create the buttons on the top, for example, so I'll draw a circle, a perfect circle, with the ellipse tool, and then click on the graphic style in the panel, and it takes on all of those attributes. Now, of course, we don't want it to be that long, so I can click on the name in the appearance panel again, and I'll change the extrude depth to about three. Now I can change the color and move it into place. Then I'll hold down the Option key and drag to make a copy, and then maybe bring up the dialog box again to do some fine tuning. Now I want to create the slider switch on the right, so I'll draw another rounded rectangle, take the eyedropper tool, and pick up the attributes of the existing buttons. I could have created another graphic style, but this is a little bit faster. You can zoom in and do some fine tuning. And now we want to create the chord. I'll draw another perfect circle, and I have a graphic style that I did create for the buttons, so I'll apply that. I want to make it longer, so I'll increase the extrude depth and then change the color to white. Now when I put it into place, you can see that it's in front of the iPod itself, so I want to go up to Object, Arrange, and Send to Back. So I'll just fast forward here. I made two more circles and applied the extrude effect to make the chord. And now, just for some finishing touches, I'm going to add a drop shadow. So you can access the effects in the appearance panel, you can also go to the effects menu to stylize drop shadow. I've already made this one, so I'm just going to click preview and that's what I want. Click OK. And then select the other two parts of the chord and apply that drop shadow to those. We'll also put the drop shadow on the body of the iPod as well, and you can do that by pressing Command Shift E, or just go up to the effects menu and choose to apply the last effect that was used. Now I want to stress that Illustrator is not a full-fledged 3D modeling and rendering application. If I were to take this image and rotate it, for example, you can see that each object behaves independently of one another. It's not going to behave like a complete 3D render. Here it is in outline mode, and you can see the distinct objects. So you're not going to get a shiny, metallic, reflective surface like you might expect with a full-on 3D application. However, this remains a live, editable object, so I can change the colors and the settings before committing to it. That's the end of part one. In part two, we'll create the screen and the icons and map them to the 3D surface.